And so we're now at Revelation chapter 19, and then we'll read verse 9. And he saith unto me, Write, so God is speaking to John, telling him to write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. So God says, they're blessed if they are called. Then he continues on, and he saith unto me, so God is speaking to John, these are the true sayings of God. So it's a true saying, it will not die out. And I've explained that last week. So now we're at verse 10, verse 10. Here's something interesting. It says, now remember, it's an angel speaking to John, right? Verse 10 says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. So John, he falls down to the ground prostrate on his feet and then tries to worship the angel. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. But the angel says, don't do it. Don't worship me. Make sure you don't do it. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren. The angel says, I'm a fellow servant like you. I'm a servant like you. And of thy brethren, I am of your family. Ah, wait a minute. So here are some interesting things. So then John tries to fall down and then worship this angel here. But then the angel points out that uh, see thou do it not. Why? The reason why is because he is considered to be, notice the wording, fellow servant and of thy brethren. Now, think about it. Throughout the Bible, angels are known as what? Sons of what? God. All right, John chapter 1, verse 12. You're considered to be a son of what? Ah, look at there. So then, in the book of Matthew, where Jesus talks about uh, when we are going up to heaven, we are not given to marriage or marrying, but we're as the what? Angels of God up in heaven. So you've got to understand then, when we are transformed up in heaven, it's literally the same thing, sons of God. We are going to look like angels. But let me stretch it even further then, okay? But for some people who have a hard time believing, go to 1 John 3. 1 John 3. So we look like angels then, but here's the second one. You notice that the Lord Jesus Christ, he's known as the Son, singular, of God, correct? Whereas the angels and us were known as sons of God. You see this closeness? It's so close, we may not be the exact thing like Jesus, but it is so close that there's going to be somewhat of a, uh, it's such a strong similarity and representation that we might even look like Jesus, actually. Because think about this, John... He knows that Jesus should be the one that he should honor and worship. That's good. John is not stupid. John should realize that Jesus is the only one that we should honor and worship. However, when he falls down to the ground, the angel says, "Don't." Uh, what did he say? See thou do it not, because he's identifying himself. He's saying, I am your fellow servant. I am like you. I'm not the God to be worshipped. Wait a minute then that means then over here that if the angel had to tell himself clearly where he's distinguishing himself, then that means over here if the angel's trying to distinguish himself from that, then John must have mistaken him for something else. He mistaked him to be Jesus Christ. Wow. That's good. So the Lord Jesus Christ who's sitting on his throne over here, we've got to understand how did Jesus Christ appear as throughout the Old Testament? As the angel of the what? So similar with an angel, but it's not like an ordinary angel, however. Isn't that interesting? So it's not, uh, so Jesus is not an ordinary angel. He's known as the angel of the Lord. But the wording is so, but he's so similar. See, Jesus appears as an angel and then John mistake the angel to be like Jesus. It is not, we got to understand this. That's why it's not far-fetched. It's actually much more easier and it makes more sense. It makes more sense when we look through the exact wording 
sons of God, son of God. Different versions will be like the angels of heaven, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that we will be like Jesus Christ when we get resurrected. Look at 1 John chapter 3. Amen. 1 John chapter 3. Look at verse 2. Verse 2. <clears throat> verse 2. But now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. So the appearance is not shown yet what we're going to be like. But we know, but this is what we know, what our appearance is like. When he shall appear, Jesus, when he appears, we shall be like him. We're going to be like Jesus. But this is not just, oh, it's going to be like Jesus or like as an angel. No, this goes even stronger. When we're like him, based on what reason? For what? We shall see him what? As he is. See, when Jesus appears, we're going to see him as he is over there. And then the verse says over here, we shall be like him. See, it says we shall be like him. Why? Why are we going to look like Jesus? Based on we shall see him as he really is. How about that? It says for. See, it's explaining why. We shall be like him for, based on that reason, we shall see him as he is. Amen. Wow. So a lot of people don't understand the joy of looking like Jesus Christ. Well, I don't want to look like Jesus Christ. Why not? I mean, how, did, how can we say that? A lot of people, they look at celebrities and they say, oh, I want to look like him. I want to look like her. My goodness, why not the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords? The one who created you and I, not only that, he gave his life for a scumbag like you and I. Amen. And he gave us a privilege, amen, brother. We, he gave us a privilege where we're going to have the honor of looking like him. When all we are is sinners who deserve help. Do you realize how much the Lord Jesus Christ loved you that much and died for you? So... This kind of doctrine, even some deep ones, we got to understand they could be very, very important. And Bible believers should not take it for granted and go, ah, it's just weird and strange. And No, you shouldn't do that. I mean, you got to realize if there are some Bible believers, Bible believing preachers who taught that kind of stuff to not just take it as a grain, to not just say, oh, OK, but no, you can't just take it like a grain of salt. There's there's some reason behind it. OK, let's go to Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 19, chapter 19. Let's keep reading here. Uh, the next part of verse 10. That have, so he's like the brethren that have the what? Testimony of Jesus worship God. So the angel, he's saying, I'm like you who have the testimony of Jesus. Testimony. See, we're representing Jesus. See, when the Bible talks a lot about representing Jesus and being like Jesus, it's really much more close than you think. But anyway, so we all have the testimony of Jesus, so that's why worship what? Worship God. So because, man, the honor of being like him, it makes us realize that we have to worship him. He deserves more worship than, than anyone else. To be like Jesus Christ should make you fall on your knees and worship him, actually. So you worship God based on that reason. Now look at this. For the testimony of Jesus. Okay, what's the testimony of Jesus? Is the what? Spirit of prophecy. Wow, look at that. The spirit of prophecy over here. I mean, that book is so powerful. Uh, when we read Revelation chapter 1, we saw so many things about the spirit of prophecy, correct? We saw so much about the seven spirits that come out, and then the word of God, etc., etc. That word of God has something very spiritual and powerful in it that we don't know about. And a lot of people, you hear them so much talking about prophecy, prophecy, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and you see these charismatics just jumping up and down on it, and then Perry Stone's trying to take advantage of that and other people, where they combine Holy Spirit with prophecy together, so you got speaking of tongues, a filling of the Spirit, visions, visions, connecting that with end times, prophecy, revelation unfolding, etc., etc. You know, a lot, of peop a lot of these people don't understand this, is that when the Holy Spirit comes down, 
and gives you prophecy, it's based on what? The testimony of Jesus. Did you see that? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. A lot of people think that, well, uh, to be a prophet, you have to have a direct vision from the Holy Spirit, and then all of a sudden you see a vision and a dream, and then you have to predict them what's going to happen to them in the future. No, the Bible shows over here that to be a prophet is to have the testimony of Jesus. Don't we all have the testimony of Jesus Christ in us? And that is prophecy. You are prophesying to them. For example, being a Christian testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ, we know that we are going to heaven after we die, and we cannot lose our salvation. Once saved, always saved. Jesus Christ paid it all, right? And then these people online get mad at you. How dare you? You're saying a license to sin that you're going to go to heaven no matter what. Yeah, because we have the testimony of Jesus. So we can prophesy to you that in the future, after I die, I'm going to heaven, not burning in hell. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So eternal security is the spirit of prophecy. To deny eternal security, you don't have the spirit of prophecy. Uh, another example of the spirit we mentioned that, you know, the Bible says, we say to a lost person, if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. Guarantee, guarantee 100%. You know what you are? You're prophesying to them every time you're street preaching. Every time you're witnessing to a person about this is where you will go after you die. You know what you're doing? You're prophesying to them through the word of God. You know what you're doing when I read to you the Bible about... Jesus Christ will rapture us to heaven before the tribulation. You know what I'm doing? I'm prophesying. Amen. To deny a pre-tribulation rapture, where God will rapture his children before the tribulation, you don't have the spirit of prophecy. But I can prophesy that 100%. People online, you better be sure, Pastor Kim, because I'm scared and you'll be responsible for damning my soul. Hey, it's the word of God, not me. That's a spirit of prophecy. And for those of you who reject the spirit of prophecy, see, you're rejecting what God's giving to you. When you have the word of God, you're automatically a prophet. Look at 2 Peter 1. And that's stronger. Listen up now. Any charismatic, Sid Roth and those people who get over a million subscribers, etc., and try to give this stuff about prophesying and vision, what will happen in the future... Didn't you know that if you're just a simple layman armed with scripture, you just have a King James Bible in your hand, you are prophesying more than all that Sid Roth and all the charismatic pastors, Perry Stone and all these guys can conjure up together? Just being a Bible believer, if you study doctrine of God, Pastor, you're making a big deal about different doctrines. Yeah, because that's the spirit of prophecy over here. Amen. Oh, let's not emphasize doctrine. Let's emphasize more on visions. What are you, then that's not the right spirit of prophecy. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And then look at verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven we heard. Right? A direct, God directly speaking to someone. See that? I, hear, I heard an audible voice and God was really speaking to me. Well, look who's more powerful than that. Verse 19. We have also a what? More. More sure word of prophecy. Oh, what's stronger than a direct communication with God? What is stronger than that? Amen. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of what? Scripture. Right there. You are prophesying. A Bible-believing Christian who believes in a pre-tribulation rapture, doctrine, who believes in dispensational truth, doctrine, who is called a Bible thumper, doctrine, who is known as being divisive of the church over theological issues, doctrine, see that? Uh, Bible-believing Christian who is into that word of God, he has more spirit of prophecy than a person who says that I saw a direct vision of Jesus and he touched my cheek and then wiped the tear out of my eyelids and then uh, I seen Jesus. You got more of the spirit of prophecy than those people. So remember, this spirit of prophecy is given powerfully and manifested inside the church as a whole. If they were, are based what on the word of God. Churches don't have prophets now. They don't have the spirit of prophecy.